brief backstory. You you were a legend on the fucking GLO forums. I knew you back then. What was your <laughs> username? Slick back hair or something, right? Same as now, slick back hair, yeah. Yeah. You're a legend over there. You knew how to get laid. You knew how to make money, or you do now. You joined my coaching program like three months ago, mm-hmm. and you were like, basically, you came to me. I'll give you the honest truth. At the start, I was like, why is this motherfucker like coming? Or like, what is he? When we first sat down on the first call, I was like, what does he want from me? And then you kind of said, like, I'm sick of being like the lone fucking wolf. Like, I want to learn how to like go deeper on shit, be more open, be more vulnerable with chicks, ask for help. Why was that shit such a struggle for you? And and because it was for me too. It was really hard to not be the lone wolf. But why was it a struggle for you? Yeah. So I've been thinking about this whole like leading up to the call. And if I would describe this call in a sentence, I would call it the only way to get rid of anxiety or insecurity for good. And, mm-hmm. and the reason why I say that is because um, when I came to you, right, you know, I was like, man, I really did want to do that. Like, that was my main thing. I really wanted to do that because um, I don't know the surface level shit. And I'm just like, I'm just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, it, does, it doesn't like attract me in any way, right? As in like casual surface level sex. Like yeah just that. casual surface level like surface level friends surface level yeah. bitch relationships several level girls like it's just all like i don't this shit sucks that's <laughs> just to me it just kind of sucks it's like i'm i, I don't want to do this especially with all the crazy shit happening like, nah i need people who are in my like not in my like i need people who are like in line with me like i believe these things and i need you to be in line with that and if you're not in line with that that's fine but i don't want to be around that too much right yeah, you're talking um, about like principles. Yeah. Like beliefs, principles. Yeah. Yeah, because that shit was, um, I was uh, hanging around a friend group. I didn't realize this. It took me a long time to realize this, but I was hanging around a friend group at the time who were just like, just so focused on like complaining about shit and bitching about other things. And, and it like that kind of shit. And just, there was just so much of it, but it was really like, it was done softly. It was very insidious. Mm. And it, it took me a while to realize it because I stopped hanging out with them. But that shit really got into my head. And it started like bleeding out into like everything, you know, mm. just talking to girls. I started being like that Nancy negative and all that shit. It's a work. I started bitching more and complaining. It felt like I deserved more, but you know, all of this shit. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, whoa, okay. <clears throat> now, now, once I realized that, I said, I didn't want that. And when it came to you, that was the thing I told you on the first call. Like, I, I know what I don't want but I don't know what it is I actually want, right? Yeah. And you, and that is like, that's because I've been surface level with myself. You know, everybody's like, um, everybody wants to get, you know, jacked, ripped, and, you know, laid and all that shit. But then like, you know, you got to go deeper, right? Once you get past that, you get, that's like level one, right? Like what's level two and what's level three of you, right? So, um, yeah, I joined to like be comfortable with asking for help, being more open with chicks, like, like just do it like you know like that's the shit that to me was the most scariest thing still is scary i think everybody can say that be scary as fuck right yep. like why do guys uh why do guys start like hitting the gym really fucking hard and all that shit and like you'll see them do crazy shit you know like people who did the approach anxiety program right i was one of them i went all the way to week eight and that shit it gets kind of nutty right week eight isn't it for those who don't know good looking loser took down the last couple of weeks because they're so fucking insane i didn't do past week six I finished at week six. Yeah, they get they get pretty nutty and like, but all of that shit is a is a, what I would just call like <clears throat> the equivalent to skydiving. It's a thrill, mm-hmm. right? It's not the real yeah. thing. It's not like it's like yeah, it's a perceived risk, but really, it's just all it is is a cheap thrill. It's, it's cheap still thrill. rewarding. Let's be clear, and I think it's almost a necessary step. I don't think you get to the place you're at right now where you start talking about like what are the deeper things, and we're going to talk specifically about you know, what we're talking about when we say deeper shit. I don't think we get to that point without doing the surface level shit first. No, you, I, I don't think we should sure. skip it. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think there's also a way to um, take that, like take the mentality to the beginner. Right. I agree. I agree. I agree. I, I Cause I've had, my, I've had my own experience too, as a beginner where like, I was honest with the chick and I was just, but those are like the first times too. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't realize what i was doing but i was like yeah, whoa for sure um <clears throat> I, I don't think you have to 
I mean, I think that's that's the point of my website, right? Or it's one of the points is like you can be honest with chicks from the very start. You can screen for like friends who will have your back and take a bullet for you from the start. You can cut out anyone in your life that isn't, you know, adding to your life. You can cut that out from the start. I agree you can skip a lot of the shit. But in order to get to the point where you're talking about the deeper stuff, maybe here's how I would phrase it. For people like you and I in particular, I think we needed to do a bunch of the shallow shit. I think that's what we were chasing. And if someone had gone back to me maybe three years ago and said, Andy, okay, five years ago and said, you can skip all this shallow shit, I would have said like, fuck you. Like I wanted to be the lone wolf. I was so arrogant and like egotistical. I thought I knew better than everyone. If you had said to me like, Andy, you're allowed to just be honest with chicks and have deep relationships with them. You're allowed to like them, dude. You're allowed to even love them. Mm -hmm. I would have been like, no, no, no. I'm a lone wolf. I'm going to do my thing. Don't tell me what to do. If someone had said, you don't have to struggle, like you're allowed to just skip the struggle and get to the point where this shit is fun. I would have been like, no, fuck you. How dare you? There's even someone on my forums. I'm not going to shout him out by name. He'll probably know who I'm referring to that. He recently, I said to him, like, you're allowed to just be okay now, dude. Like you've come a long way. You've, you've lost your virginity. You've gotten laid. You've learned how to cold approach. You're crushing it. You're allowed to just be okay now. And he basically said to me, Dude, you wouldn't have been okay back in when you were in my position. So don't fucking tell me to be okay. And I was like, okay, like he's another person like me, like you, who's going to have to go through this like hero's journey where you want to be the lone wolf. You want to do it all yourself. And then at the end go like, fuck, this is lonely. Like I'm glad I had a lot of casual sex, but like I I have a chip on my shoulder and I'm angry at everyone. Can I just like enjoy my life now? Yeah. It really does what it comes down to, right? Like you start feeling like, man, Am I actually like, do I actually have friends or do I actually have people account on or even with yeah. chicks? Like, like what the fuck? Like, when you because you have to do the whole game shit at the beginning, but after a while, it's like, what the fuck? Like, is she here because of the games or is she here because, you know, yeah. she wants to be? Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Right. And you start caring because eventually you do come to that point where you're like, I think in the beginning, yeah, it's kind of adversarial where you're like, it's you versus her, you versus Yeah. Woman. You're just trying to get laid. You're just trying to yeah. get her pussy. You don't really care who she is or what she's about or what she might want. You're like, I don't give a shit. I just want sex. Yeah, that's all it is at first. But then later on, like, the more, like, you get to, you get to enjoy it. Like, the more you get to be honest, really. Mm-hmm. The more you get to be honest with the chick. And you realize, like, yo, you're telling, you're saying exactly what it is you want. You're saying exactly what it is you need. Mm-hmm. And you get it. Or you don't, right? You get it or you don't. One of those two things will happen. Mm-hmm. But you get it. And the chick is a, and the chick is a bombshell. You like her, she like she's great for you, like sweet, all that shit. The kind of girl you dream about, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get it, and you get from being honest. All of a sudden, your brain is like, "Holy shit! What just happened? Like, I can be honest with a chick, get that kind of quality, and I'm just like, I'm just laying it out, right? Like, I'm just laying it out. Like, this is it. This is what I want. This is it, and that's it." No games, no nothing. When that happens, I start, I really believe, like, if you can get to that point as early as possible, even just as experiment, like, even for, like, beginners, just to experiment with it, I feel like you'll be so much better off. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, you have no idea how many of my, like, coaching clients or people who just read my Tinder guide or whatever, and I, I talk about full honesty in that. I say, just fucking say what you want. Literally just say, I want to fucking have sex with you. Or, like, hey, you're sexy. Do you want to go grab a drink? See what happens. Like, like literally say that. Don't play the fucking games. You have no idea how many people will email me or, or just hit me up or whatever and say, dude, I tried this honesty thing. Or, or maybe they're with a chick and they don't know how to, like, get what they want. And so I say, just fucking ask for what you want. Literally, mm-hmm. or, or they're nervous. Maybe they have erectile dysfunction or something. And I'll say, just literally tell her you're fucking nervous and you're anxious and you can't get a fucking boner but you're going to fool around and do some other shit. They say that the chick responds like incredibly well as 99% of women will when you're just honest and say what you want or, or what's on your mind. Dude, their minds are fucking blown. I have like so many emails from people saying like, holy shit, I tried being honest. I can't believe this fucking worked. Like I've been playing games for the last five years or, uh, you know, I thought I had to play games. I can't believe I can just say what I want and she'll either say yes or no. Yes, I want that. No, I'm looking for something different. And I look at those people, and I'm sure you would too, if you were me and you could see the same thing. Like, because you and I have a very fucking similar backstory of like lots of games, lots of fucking pickup out of shit, lots of like, you know, thinking yeah. we can't get laid. The worst part, the worst part too is that 
I think the worst thing that could have ever happened. I I don't know if it happened for you, but when I did try to pick up Artie Shin, I did the games. I did get a smoking hot chick. That was the worst thing. No, yeah, no, dude. I got. Let's That's be clear. the worst fucking clear. thing. Let's be fucking clear. Pick up Artie shit works. Red pill shit works. Playing fucking games works. Being a psychopath works. Keep like doing the push pull thing works. Yeah. Soft nexing works. Ignoring them but for like a week. Worse. All of it that shit so works, but yeah, you get into a situation where now you guys are fucking enemies and you have to keep up the games. And the longer you do that with a chick or with chicks yeah. in general, you get to a point where, like you said before, you think, if I stop playing these games, I won't be able to get laid anymore. Like, if I'm just yeah, me, not. if, yeah, she's like, not. and not just her, like, no one will fuck me. I've, because mm-hmm. in your mind, you look at all the chicks that you're fucking and you think they're only here. Because I played all these games, because I did everything perfectly, because I did all this fucking pickup yep. shit. Yep. And if I stop that, she'll think like, yeah. wow, you're such a little fucking beta fucking faggot. Yeah. I'm going to leave. Yeah. And, and sometimes that happens. The worst thing is if you get yourself into that situation with girls where you have been dishonest for a long period of time. I say this to people sometimes. If you then start being honest, she'll go like, whoa, what the fuck is this? Like, I can't handle your honesty now. Maybe I was yeah. never prepared for it. Sometimes it works out, but a lot of the time it doesn't because it's like you guys have established this weird, like, let's fight each other sort of mentality. I'm going to get sex from you. I'm not going to tell you what's on my mind. I'm never going to ask for what I want. I'm going to fucking ignore you for a week and then just text you like nothing happened. I'm going to play these fucking games. I'm going to take six hours to reply to every text. If I drop all that, I have fundamentally changed as a person. And so you're yeah. going to think something's wrong. And so, yeah, fair enough. You're going to leave. So that's kind of the catch 22 is like, you want to go into this shit being honest. So you're establishing that like as a ground rule from the start, like I'm an honest, stoic, you know, rational person. If you're not going to be that too, like, let's not do this. And then she goes, okay, from the start, I have to be honest too. Cause he's honest. Yeah. And that's the, the other thing. The other thing about that is, um, fuck. I wish I had said it when it came up. Um, you know, again, I always, I always want to, I want to preface this, right? Because, like, mm-hmm. I don't want this to sound like a magic bullet either. It's like, oh, if I'm honest, I'll magically get the pussy. No, it's not what happens. <laughs> you know, like, you know, because I feel like that that happens, right? That becomes a mentality. Oh, if I'm honest. Oh, no, 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 no. Here's, yeah. okay, here's how people phrase it, right? I will say, uh, be completely honest, or I will say, um, like, here's a really good example, uh, an actual example. Let's say you are trying to have sex with a girl. You've been on a date, maybe two dates. You're back at your place. You are making out with her, and she clearly doesn't want to, or she seems hesitant to have sex, right? She's, like, pushing your hand away when you try and touch her tits or something. I say, I tell people, be honest. Just say, like, you know, you maybe try, like, once or twice. She pushes your hand away. You just say, like, oh, hey, like, what's up? Are you, not like, not feeling the chemistry? Uh, did you want to, like, wait till next time before we fuck, like, are you just a bit nervous? Are you worried that I'm going to fuck you and not call mm-hmm. you again? Like, you just basically say, like, hey, what's up? Like, it seems like you're pushing my hand away. What's up? Be honest. And I say a lot of the time what will happen is the chick will then open up to you and say, like, okay, like, I'm nervous. I I, I don't want to go this fast. And you say, like, oh, that's cool. Like, we can try other shit if you want. We can just fool around. Like, we don't have to fuck whatever you're comfortable with. And sometimes what will happen is she'll end up just sleeping with you. You'll talk through it. She'll go, okay, he's actually listening to me. He's not going to pressure me. He's told me he won't pressure me. He seems reasonable. Okay, we'll end up having sex. So I will tell that to someone. And then they'll go, oh, so you're saying if I'm honest, I can fuck her. That's a good technique. And I'm like, yeah, like, no, 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 no. That's not the point. That's not the point. And I'll give the flip side. I'll give the flip side to that. I know. Because I know. I Like, we're guys, right? We know exactly how a guy would You you, you want it to be like a special, yeah, if I computer. No, push this how it combination. Works. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah. this order, it's like a password. Yeah, yeah. Like women are like a key that you got to unlock, or like a password. No, 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 like, no. Yeah. So I'll tell I'll tell you the flip side of that, right? So you say like you do that, so you you're honest. And I had that same situation happen to me when I used to live in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I had this girl in over in my apartment. She literally lived like a block and a half away from me. No idea she did, but you know she came to my place. She comes to my apartment. We put on something on the laptop. Then we start making out. Start fooling around, we start kissing. She's on my bed, you know, start running up against each other. But um, she gets very like, she's very tense, right? And it's like, and it's the kind of tense that started making me feel uncomfortable. So I was like, Yeah. Okay, so I back up a bit. I'm like, hey, you all right? Everything okay? And then she goes, like, I'm sorry, just you know, you know, last time we went on a date, you know, I kind of like the guy kind of 
forced me to do something I didn't want to do. And mm-hmm. so then I'm like, oh, hey, look. And then she says, like, I, like, no, she started that whole thing with, like, if I tell you, I feel like you're going to get mad at me and I want you to be mad at yeah. me. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 look, look at something. Just tell me what's up. That's it. And I promise you I won't be mad. So then she tells me the whole thing, like, you know, guy forced her and all that shit. I'm like, the only thing I could think in my head was at that moment, like, okay, don't fuck her. Get her out of here as soon as possible. And also just make sure you get like a, hey, I had a good night, you know, hopefully you're okay, this and that. Because like, that to me is like, I'm a little concerned just because of sheer fact I'm in Baltimore. It's a very blue state, very liberal. So Yeah, I understand that. You I, I understand that. Feel like you but at the same time, like, thing. yeah, at the same time. So I just wanted to make sure I had that angle covered. But then she tells me, um, she tells me what happened. And then I was like, don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Hey, look, listen, it's cool. Like, it's fine. Like, we don't have to do this. Like, if you're really that uncomfortable, like, it's fine. I'll walk you down. And that's it. She's like, no, but then you're going to be mad at me. And then you're going to see me. I'm like, no, I'm like, no, no, seriously. It's okay. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Like, I won't be mad. And she's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Because, so, because, because let, let me pause for a second there. You have no idea how rare that is. I've had the same sort of scenario where it's, it's at that point where it's like, you're going to have sex or you're not going to have sex. She doesn't want to. And then I say like, yeah, no, that's cool. Like, we'll, we'll just like, uh, we can hang out for a bit and then I'll say goodbye. Like, we can just do some stuff next time. And then she's like, really? You're not like mad. You, you don't want to fuck me right now. And I'm like, no, like, what do I care? Like, yeah, I wanted to fuck you. Of course. Like I'm a man, you're a woman. I want to fuck you, yeah. but like, I'll just wait till next time. And it, it seems to like almost blow their fucking mind when you do that, when you're like, yeah, I don't mind if I don't get laid tonight. Like, I don't care because that, you have to understand that's really rare. Most guys, they, they look at it from a sort of like a scarcity mindset of like, if I don't fuck her right now, that's it. That's my only chance. And I've said this a million times. I say this in my Tinder guide. You can just fuck her on the next date. Like almost guaranteed you'll fuck her on the next day or the date after or the date after whatever. Like you have almost unlimited tries and most girls will fuck you by date three unless there's like some big reason why not. And so guys will look at it like, oh my God, I have to fuck her right now. This is my only shot. If I don't, I'm not going to get laid. It's been so long since I got laid. It's like, if it's been so long since she got laid, chill and wait like a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, right? Bro. right? Like it's, if it's been six months or a year or five years since you got laid, just wait another week. Just, just chill out for a little bit. Anyway, I wanted to throw that in there. It is so rare, dude, that guys will be okay with not fucking her. And so if you're the guy that does that, who's just like chill, and he's like, yeah, I don't care if we don't fuck tonight. Do you want to just make out a little bit? Or do you want to just hang out and I'll, I'll see you next time? Girls are like, holy to, fuck. Like, yeah, and to be clear, too, like you can lose out on that, right? So like me and her, we never did hook up, never did. Sure, her. that'll happen every now and, and then, for sure. And then I was also, but I was also like kind of thankful for it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, again, by being straight up about it, I'm like, hey, listen, you can tell me what's up. So for me, like the fact when she told me that she got involved with a guy who kind of made her do something, I'm like, me personally, I don't want to be involved with that. Hmm. And I'm okay. Like, I was honest with like that. Like, I'm not like, this is one of those things that I think is important. Why I say it's kind of like, I really recommend for beginners not to just even be honest with women, but be honest with yourself. Like, you know, what are yeah. things that you'll be okay with? What are yeah. things you won't be okay with? Like, figure start figuring those things out as soon as possible because mm-hmm. it'll one save you a lot of headache. Like, how many dates have you gone on where in the beginning where you were like, "What the fuck am I doing?" Yeah, why did I put up with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm only doing it because I'm so so desperate to like get get some ass. But like, <clears throat> after you after you do it a couple times and you're like, "Shit." Like, I really recommend every beginner start asking, you know, like, what kind of chick you really want for this and that. Yeah. Because it's just one, a lot more fun. Like, you know, dating shouldn't be stressful. <laughs> it shouldn't. If you're it's playing games, to be it's going to be stressful. Yeah. If you're playing games, it's going to be stressful. If you have to think, oh, da, 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 I played a chess match with this girl. I did that for two years with one chick. I fucking, I like, I couldn't, I don't know why I did that. Like, I really don't know why I did because that. But again, that's also, we yeah, yeah, I had to. Necessary. But at the same time, like, if my father legit found out that I was doing that and sat me down and been like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you be straight up with not even her, but yourself. Like, what do you, do you want that? Is that really what you see for yourself? Like, you know, the more, the faster you can be honest with yourself, man, it allows you to start being honest with others too. And it also make it easier yeah. just to be like, ask for help, right? Yeah. Big reason why I didn't ask for help is because I didn't even know what the fuck I wanted. So how can I even go to someone and be like, can you help me with something? And I don't even know what it is that I I want to, right? When I joined the group, I told you that I didn't know what I wanted. I just don't know yep. what I didn't want. So I wanted a space to figure that out. And the reason this change started was because I bought this book called 
uh, pull up the title. I bought this book called, where are you? Called Slaying Your Fear, a guide Slaying for people fear. who grapple. Yeah, Slaying Your Fear, a guide for people who grapple with insecurity. And uh, <clears throat> the first time we got on coaching together, it was after I read a book and it was about um, alcoholic, adult children of alcoholic parents. And, you know, because I had alcoholic parents, big part, like till I was 15. So that's the first time I hit you up for coaching because we worked through that. And then this book was about insecurity and I read through it. And I was like, holy shit, this book nailed me on like so many fronts. And, you know, even that book too, it came down to it. Like, you got to be emotionally open about what you want. You got to be like, yeah. you got to be honest about what it is you want. Yeah. And it was like, that's really the only way to counter it. That's the reason why I say it too, because it's like, fuck, okay. So that's why I joined the group. I'm like, I got to learn how to do it. It scared me to death. It scared me to death to do it. It was no, like, it took, me, it took me like two and a half months to get there to finally be able to start doing it in the group. I was scared shit. It was how many so times, bad. how many times in the group did I write a big long post to you where I was like, dude, so stop being a wallflower. Times. Stop sitting on the side. You have to fucking join the group. You have to be open. You have to share your shit. You, you can't be the lone fucking wolf. Like, yeah. yeah I mean, so many, so this many was exactly times. me though, dude. I was a lone wolf as well for the longest time. I didn't, I thought that sharing what you wanted or sharing your struggles or talking about like what you're going through. I thought that was like pussy shit. I was like, that's not masculine. And it's like, no, you're just being a fucking coward. Like if you, as in, if you don't share that shit, you're being a coward. How is that masculine? At least opening up and saying like, yo, I'm worried about this or yo, I'm pissed off that my girlfriend did this. Yo, I'm stressed about these girls rejecting me. Yo, I'm having a shit day. That's fucking masculine. That, cause that takes courage. Isn't part of masculinity being courageous and so it's this weird sort of like we get it so <laughs> twisted we're like if i share my feelings if i share my fucking struggles i'm a pussy and it's like no you're a pussy if you're too scared to share that shit and to be clear yeah. you can still do that while being masculine you can say guys like i have this struggle like you don't have to fucking have a big breakdown although if you do have a breakdown that's fine but yeah guys we, we get it twisted that asking for help or asking for advice is like unmasculine people only, oh, I feel like a lot of guys in general, guys only want to ask for help when it's like near the breaking point. Yeah. Which is like, and you I, didn't have to let it get to the breaking point. Yeah, you, you didn't have to. Like know. six months ago. Yeah. Like I went through, I went through, I got to that point because I got burnt out. Mm -hmm. I got burnt out at work. I was like being overworked to like a master degree and eventually I took, I quit. Eventually I quit. And then I, that's when we started doing the coaching. I literally got to the breaking point. Yeah. Before I'm like, yo, yeah. I need to change how I'm doing things. <laughs> And I mean, and I mean, me with honesty, I did it. the same shit. I got yeah. to the point where I had like a ridiculous number of crazy girls. I had a ridiculous number of girls like cry, like, like we would date each other for like six months or a year. And the entire time I'd be playing these fucking games and they would know that I was playing the games and they would like beg me to stop fucking playing the games. And they'd basically say like, how come you never reply to my text? You take like a week to reply. Like we've seen each other for six months. Like, do you like me? Do you not? And I just like... I didn't know how to fucking handle that because I, I wanted to be honest, but I didn't know how to be. And so I had several girls like on my fucking couch crying. And in my mind, I was like, is this a game? Is she trying to manipulate me with her tears? Like, yeah. She, like, I, and it's I like, dude, she's yeah. fucking crying because you're like playing games with her and she's at her breaking point and she can't handle it. Just fucking give her a hug. But I was like, I want to give her a hug. But like, wouldn't I lose if I give her a hug? Wouldn't that mean she? Yeah, dude. I, I, like, oh my oh god. Oh my fucking god! And then finally get to a point where you're like I can't. F I got to a breaking point like you. I was like I can't fucking do this anymore. This is. It was one of my mates sat me down. God fucking bless him. My best mate to this day. He sat me down and had an intervention and was like, "You're being a psychopath. Like you're literally being a psychopath. If you keep doing this, you'll become a psychopath." you can't tell me that you don't have a conscience. You can't tell me this doesn't hurt you. And I was like, no, dude, I don't even care about the games. I don't care. And he's like, you're lying. Like, look me in the eyes and tell me this doesn't hurt you. And I was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't like tell him I struggled. I was like, I can't tell you. I don't, I couldn't look him in the eyes. And he's like, there you go. Like you're full of shit. You don't like doing this. You are being a psychopath. You're going to get worse if you keep doing this. Why don't you just try being nice to this woman? And that was like a whoa, huge epiphany. And I was like, do I have to play these games? And I just tried being honest. And it worked, like you said, 10 times fucking better. 
And I was like, why did I need to do all this all these years? And it was because I was fucking scared. I was like terrified to open up because when you open up when you're honest with a girl there's a chance that she can reject you're yourself yeah you, you're putting yourself at risk and then you're putting yourself yeah. at the utmost risk it's not like yes. when you do the yes. it's not like when you do the silly shit in the approach anxiety program where you're like you know you go up to a bitch and be like banana phone or this yeah. or that like it's stupid like there's there's no real risk right it's like right. oh you're gonna go and make a weird but you know you're gonna go make a yourself so you're like you kind of have this weird like front up that's like taking care of that but when you legit lay it out there for her to, like you're like this is i'm coming to you as a man like this is me mm -hmm. that's like that's the shit that they'll be like one ten times better because the women that do respond well to it you're gonna want them around oh like, and they <laughs> respond really there are women there are so many women out there that respond so fucking well to honesty like it's like yeah. a whole new universe of women that you didn't mm -hmm. even know before because guess what you weren't getting those women you were screening them out by playing fucking games, there are a ton of women that are sick of games or never wanted to play games in the first place or think that it's a, a fuck boy thing to do. And so you play games with them, you're dishonest with them, you do this pickup shit with them and they will run away. But when you start being honest, those women will go like, oh my God, like, yes, I've been waiting for you. Like I've, I've wanted to be honest. I've, I've dated three guys in the past that we kind of played games. I couldn't open up to them, you know, and now like you're here. Yeah. Fuck. I've been waiting for this. So it's like you screen in an entire different like genre of women who want to be honest with you, who have like principles who are into self-improvement, who want to be honest. Like you end up with, I would say, at least for the things I'm looking for, a better class of women for sure. 100%. I agree. 100% agree. When I think about um, the last relationship I was in, which was with that girl in Washington, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we were just playing games. Like the, the shit that you described was like the shit I was doing to it. Too. Like to the point where she came one day to my apartment and was crying on the bed. And, and I was just like, I remember saying it too, man. She goes, um, she said something to me, and this was so bad. Like I remember saying it. Um, she goes, why aren't you like saying anything? I was like, well, I don't know. I legit said to her, I was like, I don't know if these tears are honest or just shit oh, like that. No, yeah, I know. I like, genuinely what a said that situation that. to be in, right? Like, yeah, it I was so think you're bad. lying to it me because was... you're crying. Yeah, I was just like, fuck, man. And you know, and then she just stormed off, which she had every right to. <laughs> I mean, she. <laughs> She's still, I mean, think how started. invalidating that is. Imagine you go to a chick and you're really fucking vulnerable. You're really down about something. You're really bothered about something. And then she's yeah. like, I think you're lying to me right now. And you're like, fuck you. Like, this was my moment of vulnerability. <laughs> like, fuck I you. actually, like, I actually had that. I had a, a very similar moment uh, with your girl, but it was like, it was sort of something completely different. It wasn't even about lying. It's just, she said something to me and it was coming that I didn't like. I told him, like, the fuck is, what the, I'm like, what if all these past actions have been in this time and this shit? She said something in jest, but I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, one of the, my favorite things about honesty that I've learned very quickly too is that um, when you know you don't like something and you tell some, you tell these chicks that you don't like this shit that you're doing, 99% of the time, they don't do it anymore. And anytime they do it again, they're very quick to be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Sorry. yeah. It is amazing. One of the things, again, I didn't know that you could do but when you start yeah. learning, like, you're like, yo, you can just tell someone you don't like something and do something, and that's it. And if they keep doing yeah. it, guess what? Now you know this is not a person you could, you should be around because yeah. it's like they don't respect that. Yeah, yeah, and, and both people get to do that. Like, one of the things I like the best about my relationship with Imogen is, like, we can just fucking say shit to each other. And obviously, let's add in the fucking caveat that you and I know by default, but let's add the caveat in for those who maybe don't. You can't control someone else's behavior. Like what you just yeah. said there was a perfect way of phrasing it. You can say, hey, I don't really like that. Like, you know, that's not really what I'm into. If they keep doing it, it's like you, you don't stop them doing it. You just go like, okay, either I'm going to be okay with it and let go of my expectations of them to stopping it. Or I'll just like, you know, move on. Or I'll just keep this as a casual relationship and like blah, blah, blah. But yeah, being able to just say like, I like that or I don't like that. And them saying I like that or I don't like that. And here's the flip side. You can also engineer a relationship or a dynamic that you really enjoy by praising the stuff you do like. Like, let's say a chick, I don't know, one day randomly cooks you dinner. First time she's ever cooked you dinner. You can praise it. the shit out of that. Yeah, you can be like, 
yo, this really means a lot to me. Like, this is really, really, really nice of you. This is exactly the kind of woman I want. Like, this is really cool. I've always <laughs> wanted a woman who's feminine. Like, this is really cool. And then guess what? She's going to want to do that again. And she, you can encourage her. You can literally tell her to do the same shit with you. You can say anything that I do that you really like, fucking tell me. And so what you will get is this beautiful fucking dynamic where you praise and you're usually praising the feminine shit she does. And she'll praise the masculine shit you do. Like she'll say, I really like that you're ambitious. I really like that you're very stoic. I really like that you have your shit together. I really like that you're honest with me. And you can kind of just do this like yin yang thing where you say what you want. She says what you want. Sorry, what she wants. And then you're both like building towards something together. There's nothing wrong with praise. Yeah. Praise you, I think okay, you're saying I think that that's like another you're, thing. You're saying that think, like you used to not like praise, like giving praise. I say it like I used to think it was a bad thing to give praise. Um, oh, dude, it, is this like is this like on the on the fucking red pill and shit where they say like uh, you shouldn't give women compliments because you're giving them like free validation? Is that like where it's coming from? No, it was just like it was part of the game playing shit. You know, it was okay. um, it was like I remember one girl in my first early relationships like it was in twenties, like twenty twenty one beautiful girl nicaraguan uh nicaraguan princess she um she fucking cooked me dinner once right? and, I'm, and i was such a dumbass i said oh it was good but you know you could have done this better oh no instead of just like and it was her first time ever cooking too so it was like oh, no. it wasn't it was so bad it was so bad yeah. like dude like and again like, this the shit all comes because like you know i did all this shit because i again i didn't know what the fuck i wanted so yeah. what happens when you don't know what you want? Other people can direct what yeah. you want. Yep. Like, oh, and if and when you're a young man and you, or you care about self-improvement, you're going to come across like, oh, shit, nothing wrong with it. It's a good thing, but it can be taken the wrong way. Anything can be taken to extremes, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I told her that. I was so stupid. But then the past girl, like, she did cook, and I was just like, oh, my God, it's amazing. Now I want yeah. to cook all the time, right? yeah praise uh -huh. is fucking amazing like especially it ties over into sex as well um like like in the bedroom saying what you want like praising any of that but it, it applies outside that i just say in terms of in a relationship like as much praise as you can give her like absolutely fucking -lutely. i'm a big i do this with my coaching clients too like i'm a big i never yell at anyone or say that's wrong that's stupid i never tell anyone like off or tell them that they've done something bad or that they're not good i will do the opposite and praise and i will even if and you can do this in a relationship if there's a something you would like her to do more you can praise her if she even starts the process like you don't have to wait till she's like done everything you can just say something like let's say she hasn't cooked for you but i don't know she fucking gets you something from the fridge you can say like that's really cool i like it like i really appreciate that i really like it when a woman like provides for me like and, and nourishes me like my mother used to cook amazing meals blah 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 you can like praise her for something she hasn't done yet and then she'll go like oh maybe i should cook and then she'll cook and you keep praising that so yeah man like i, I did the same shit where i wouldn't praise girls either i had girls cook for me and then i just say like oh that's cool like and that was that's it that's yeah, it. Like, yeah, no. Oh, cool. She'd be like, I slaved away for like, you know, five hours cooking. I had this Vietnamese chick that I saw and a Malaysian chick. Asian chicks are very good at cooking food for you. They're very fucking feminine. I, I had uh, the Malaysian chick in particular cooked me like fucking Malaysian food. She like handmade like roti, the little bread. She made like curries. She made all this fucking food and the Vietnamese chick did too. She handmade like those little like spring roll things that they have, but the rice paper rolls. Like she made all this food. And for both of them, I was just like, oh, cool. And like they kept making food to me, and each time I was just like, "Oh, nice, yeah, this is good, yeah." Like, but not like, "Holy shit, I can't believe you just made this for five hours." That's really fucking genuinely sweet of you. That's cool. I didn't spend five hours doing something for you right now. That's fucking dope. Like, but yeah, it's just like, "Oh, that's cool. Oh, it tastes good. Yeah, yeah, it's good." And it was like yeah, amazing too. It was like restaurant quality for both of them. It's just like this fucking. It's what you said. It's not defining your goals. I mean, good looking loser says you have to define your goals before you go for them. I say, and the first thing I get my coaching clients to do is figure out what you fucking want. At the start of my Tinder guide, I say, decide what you want your sex life to look like. If you don't know what you want, if you don't know the kind of women you want in your life, it, it reminds me of that. Uh, I think it's Alice in Wonderland. There's something like the, the, the rabbit or the, the hare or whatever says some coy along the lines of, where are you going and i think alice says like i don't know and he says well if you don't know where you're going then you're going to get there which means like if you just sit you know, there like you that. said 
Yeah. If you sit there and say, I don't know what I want. I don't know what kind of women I want. I don't know like what I'm working towards. I don't know what my goals are. Like you said, the women will just lead. And the women, like, you don't know what they want. You probably I mean, just end up with a bunch of shit relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Role. You're going to end up with women that are just that aren't looking for that kind of masculine leading energy, which let's be honest, most of us want to be that masculine leading energy. Mm. And so you're just going to, any of the feminine chicks that would go along with your shit, are just going to go somewhere else. Cause they're like, this guy's just playing fucking games. This guy doesn't know what he wants. This guy doesn't praise me. He doesn't tell me what he wants. He doesn't like communicate with me. He doesn't fucking open up. It's funny that like the word communicate gets such a fucking bad rep. Hey, like people, oh, yeah. if you, yeah. like, People hate the word communicate, which is why you'll you'll notice I'm so careful every time Not I talk about it. I say, yeah, I say be open, or I say keep it real, or I say just be real with chicks, or I say don't play games. I say just fucking say what you want, be masculine. I never say communicate because people just have such an aversion to that word. They're like, I'm not going to communicate. What are you like a couples counselor? That's like feminine shit. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I'm. I'm and then it turns into it, it. Then it becomes you versus me against whoever. Like it's not even like. You're not even talking about the couple now. You're with the client, and it's like you yeah. versus me. Yeah, and yeah, that's dude. bad. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about your chick? Um, because you learned to be open, like the chick that you were dating. Should we just call her a yoga girl? Yeah, she yoga. Girl. Yoga, or you met her at yoga or something. She had. A I met her at the beach, but then you know, I, then she ended up being like super into yoga and all that. I'm like, oh, dude. this is sweet. That's- you know, every time you would talk about this girl, all I would imagine was like that she just like she was one of those girls that like twenty four seven just wore like yoga pants and a yo- like a yoga top, like and she just went to <laughs> it all was, the time. Like it that was, was like all like, she it, ever wore. <laughs> it was more like six seven, <laughs> if that makes sense. Six hours a day, seven days a week of like yoga, yeah. like yeah, yoga yeah, clothes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's cool. what I imagine. Just she's always wearing yoga, and maybe yeah. she has like a little for the most band. For the most part. band. Okay, but um, so, yoga girl, honesty. Talk yeah. about honesty. Like talk about how you learn to be more honest with her. Right. So the real rubber meets the road moment came when um when uh what happened? She did this thing at uh what was it? We had a we had a we had an event where like. I was just so focused on work. Uh, crazy shit happened where the project I did got scrapped and I had to do the whole thing from scratch in like three days. And these things take a lot more time than three days. So it was, it was just, I was just not there, right? And then she came over, she was doing all this stuff for me, but I was not even giving her any attention at all. I wasn't even saying thank you. I was just, I was just not there, right? And I didn't even think to tell her too what was going on again, right? Like this is not being like, this is not being honest and just even straight up telling her, hey, look, listen, I need the weekend. I got this thing came up. I couldn't even say that, right? Because I felt mm-hmm. saying the words I need is just like that sentence for men, right? You did. I did <laughs> want to ask you about that at some point. You struggled with admitting you had like needs or like shit you yeah. wanted. We can talk about that. Yeah, in we'll, bit, we'll yeah. Come, yeah, we'll come back to that. So in response to me not really paying much attention, then she started doing the same to me. And then it like kind of became this like back and forth thing. And then she didn't want to hang out. It was just, it was all odd. It was all just, it all, and I, and after like a day or two away from it, I was just like, well, this all started because she came over and I didn't say, I'm like, all right, <clears throat> all right, I need to go. I need to go and talk to her and set this shit out. So, you know, I go and actually, no, I didn't even go. She came over and then I told her, hey, look, listen, I understand like this is my first time starting to be like honest to like a, like a real degree like a good degree of her i said hey look listen i understand that you know you came over and you really want to hang out but um i had all this stuff going on for work and for me work is very important i love what i do like it was starting to pick up steam like i didn't come this far to just let that stuff go it's very important and i had this crazy situation happen where people got like blah 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 and you know the whole point and then I came to like, and then I understood that's why you got upset. You haven't, you haven't, you've been kind of cold. You've been kind of distant. Mm-hmm. And personally, I don't like that. But yeah, I understand why you did it. But next time, I would just like you to tell me, hey, um, one, you could just point out to me that what I'm doing. Because sometimes even I don't notice it, right? Like yeah. when I get into a zone or like in a, like in a headspace, like I'm just there. Like the whole world seems to exist for me. That's for me. Like, and I don't know if that's how the people feel. But, and then I also told them, I'm like, 
<clears throat> so you can call me like call me out on something i'll be fine because like maybe i'll need that secondly um you know don't do this like cold shoulder thing with me i don't like it I really don't like it i honestly would rather have you like yell and just say something because then I'll, at that point i'll know i'm like oh okay i understand what's going on here Hold yeah up. you've got some information to then that will be even faster right yeah right and i told her like and i told her like the only reason i'm telling you this is because you know i like you i like having you around and i don't want this to become bad and this felt combative this felt like i'm gonna get back at you for not you know doing this for me and like None of this covert shit, like none of these covert contracts, like, you know, it's you and me, we can be a team, like just, you know, we can be honest with one another, we can be a unit. And that was the first time I actually had that conversation, like very directly. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> from that moment on, she like, she took to it like a duck takes to water. Like she was just all about it. And very quickly she was like, oh, I can. I'm like, yeah, it's like 100%. Mm -hmm. And if there was a moment like down the line where something is just like a, you can't compromise on them like then that's fine but at least like well no and we don't have to do this like, guessing game shit we don't have to waste yeah. time so people <laughs> do get into these weird like it it's it's a fight but it's not quite a fight where it's just like you're both just like not talking to each other i count that as a fight it's a silent fight yeah. and like those are the worst those are worse than my yeah. opinion and you can like just fight, entirely fight. avoid that i can't tell you the last time i had that with imogen because it's like you just, here's the shortcut. It's exactly what you said, you know, what you realized like was the answer. You just say what you need. And so I've lost count of that. It would be like hundreds of times at this point where either Imogen says, listen, I just need some time by myself or I need some space. I need to go think. It's not you. It's me. Like I have shit on my head or I'm angry or I'm grumpy. She'll sometimes say I have nothing to give. That's how I phrase it as well. Look, I have nothing to give you today. I just don't have any energy. I'm grumpy. I, I just have nothing to give. I don't have any love to give. Like, uh, just give me space. And we'll go away for a couple of hours, sometimes the entire day. And then you come back after that. And you're like, I really appreciate that you let me have that space. Like, I'm good now. And so just like you said, needs, just saying, I need some fucking space. Or in your case, I need to work on my fucking job for the, for the weekend. I have shit I need to do. I, I got to go do this. I'm grumpy. I have to go to the gym. I just want to be alone today. I just want to play video games and do nothing and be left alone. Like if you just say that to the person and say the sentence, it's not you, it's me. This has nothing to do with you. I'm not pissed at you. I'm, it's not that I don't want to hang out with you. I, I don't, don't even want like to hang that. out with anyone. I don't even like that person. I don't like the whole, it's not you, it's me, because it, it kind of like, for me, anyway, personally, it robs the other person of like being able to help. So I'd rather being able to say, because she had those same things, right? Where one day she's just like, she was like that, completely dead and all shit. And I'm like, I would check in, I'm like, hey, you okay? Like, you seem kind of like, like, I, it was a place I'd never seen someone go. So I was like, hey, you guys, what's going on? And she wasn't saying anything. So I'm like, all right. So silent all day. I'm like, all right. Then she wanted to start talking. And then I didn't really feel like I started talking. I'm like, I want to talk. Like, I've been trying to check and what's going on. Nothing. And then she says, I know. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I needed this. I'm like, hey, look, I care about you. But, you know, just tell me, like, hey, you need that. Because I don't personally like being made to feel helpless. And when you say it's not you, it's me, that kind of feels like I'm helpless in this situation. And I don't, I press it. Sure, like but you're never helpless because you can always just be there for the person and just say like, right, I'll, I'll be here when you get back. And that takes trust. It takes a bit of practice. You have to do that a few times and the person has to see like, oh, okay, like, I can just come back to them afterwards and everything will be okay if we talk about it. It's like, it does take a bit of trust. It did for Imogen and I. A lot of relationship shit is like figuring out how the pieces fit together. And I really like what you just said there. You said, I want to do it a different way. Or I don't, I don't like that. That wouldn't work with me. That's a big part of relationships, dude. Like I might say something works brilliantly for Imogen and I, but for you, it's like, that wouldn't click with me. I want to do it this way instead. It's like, yeah, you got to figure that shit out. Relationships are very much or very different to just like a casual sex or a friends with benefits or something. There's a lot of like figuring each other out and allowing like wiggle room to learn as you go. Like if I went and had a relationship with a different person, I would do it similarly to the way I do it with Imogen, but a lot of shit would be different because that's a different person. So a lot of this is like, you got to figure out what you like and what she likes and what works together and how you guys can be on the same team. And it will be different to the way like I do it or someone else does it. 
hundred percent. Do you want to talk about the need stuff? Um, like why you struggled yeah, to admit yeah. that you had needs, that, that, like yeah. that you needed shit. Yeah. yeah. I think that goes back to like, again, when you don't know what you want and then, and then once I started kind of figuring out what I wanted, it was the first time in my life that I ever tried to go after that. Right. Mm. So that shit is scary. Um, don't know why it was scary, but uh, actually, well, actually, I know why it was scary. Circumstances I grew up in it was like asking for needs equal like you're a bird. Something bad was gonna happen. So yeah. yeah, I didn't. So I didn't do it much. But um, yeah, there's nothing like. Uh, how about, what am I exactly trying to say? There's nothing wrong with having needs. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with having needs. It's just like for any guy who doesn't, it feels like they have to have like, there's nothing wrong with having needs. And I guess the flip side of that is that when you admit you have needs, you admit that you're not perfect. And for a lot of guys that scares the mm. shit out of them, they think they have to be perfect. Oh, brother. You yeah. don't have to be, you don't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You do not have to be perfect. Like, whether it's social media, whether it's this or is that, like, nah, bro, like, just, like, in the, just not even talking about all that shit, like, there is, is a genuine thing that, uh, especially I feel like guys in self improvement community um, feel that they have to be perfect. They have yep. to be tip-top, on point, all the time, da, 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 da. and that's just not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not the case at all. Even, and if you have to ask for help, then you're admitting that you're not perfect, right? So like, then you don't mm-hmm. want to ask for help. <clears throat> you don't want to admit you have needs. Or you don't want to admit you have desires, right? Because you're not. Because because uh, if you do, you have to admit you're not perfect, right? Yeah, you're basically so saying that was not a, okay. Yeah, you basically you're basically saying that, and that shit's scary, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that shit is scary, uh, especially uh, especially for someone self improvement. I will say that for any, for I think I think a lot of guys in self improvement are on that are on that thing where like they feel fucking just like i have to be perfect mm-hmm. um i noticed in, in the coaching group several guys were they very much felt like they have to do things perfectly mm-hmm. um you know i got knows how many <laughs> a huge how many part of my how many coaching. Well, i was gonna say you mm-hmm. already know a huge part of my coaching and what i say on the coaching like how many group coaching calls do we do where i'm literally like bro it's okay that you suck it's okay that you fucked up. Stop asking me for the perfect answer. I'm not God. Like, remember when we had that whole, um, why are you afraid of death conversation? And I was, yeah. <laughs> anyone listening is not going to know what the fuck we're talking about. But basically, like, a couple of the guys, one in particular, always comes and asks me, like, what is the correct answer? What is the perfect way to do something? How do I not fuck this up? How do I be hyper efficient? How do I remember everything that you ever teach me? And I was like, dude, like, you're not perfect. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not God. I can't give you all the answers. No one can. You don't, you're not going to have all the answers. Like, yeah, there is this idea in self-improvement that you have to be perfect or like, you got to be an alpha male. You got to be stoic. You got to be red pill. You got to be this. And it's like, dude, you're allowed to fucking not know what you're doing. Like, that's fine. Like you'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, perfection is definitely one of those fucking things that uh, yeah. uh, it just stops so much. It really yeah. is. Uh, I see it even like in the business community, um, mm-hmm. copywriters, uh, I don't like to put myself out there much, but my boys have done it for me where they like, they brag about a win I had. And then all of a sudden I get a rush of influx of like just massive amounts of messages from, you know, people who are starting. And then they're like, dude, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do that? Yeah. Oh, should I read like this giant list of books and buy this giant list of courses before? Like, and I, and I look at all that. I'm just like, no, you just, you do A or B and, and then you, you like you, take, you know you figure it out along the way like yeah. you'll learn what you need to learn when you need to learn it mm-hmm. like there that is one of those things i wish that someone had told me but you'll learn what you need to learn when you need to learn it if you decide to like do all this preparation and then you get into a situation that situation is completely different what the fuck did you just do <laughs> you know, you that just, happens like you every say, oh, time too. Fine. that happens every time yeah you, you just, think you need to read all this shit yeah. or prepare or study and then you actually do it and you're like oh fuck me that was nothing like what i i read like it was in or, Dude, all that was, was this, irrelevant um, like there's a book um called extreme ownership uh jacko willings right 
and uh, yep, yep. uh for the most part the book's a bunch of analogs but there was like there's one main the main story of it there's like two main points extreme ownership is one but the second one is i think equally important is that um he realized that the reason that they shot at each other like friendly fire was because when he looked at the plan it was extremely detailed like we're gonna do this when this happens and 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 it's like yeah a battlefield is not like that and i'm just quoting him right not that i know but he, i'm just quoting him because like a battlefield is not like that you need to have that the mission statement very clear this is our goal yep this this is our goal this is the one thing we need to make sure happens mm -hmm. to get to that goal mm -hmm. and how we get to that point we figure it out along the way mm -hmm. and it's just because like shit happens shit is going to happen right you'll be when then you start talking to girls like oh da, 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 da. and then you realize or you could prepare what you want but then you start going out talking and then you realize there's only you're in a town of thirty thousand people oh yep. you know yep. your problem may not be you your problem may be logistically you're not in a good situation you need to move mm -hmm. oh but you know then it becomes oh where should i move to i need to look at all these places and and then 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 you know and it becomes a whole fucking thing. Yeah, almost but yeah, every man, perfection. time you start, yeah, a bunch of shit comes yeah. off. Perfection. A bunch of shit comes off. You don't know. You don't know what you're going to need to know. Yeah, yeah. But again, it all ties to like, you know, asking, you know, needs, needs, uh, admitting needs is, again, like admitting that you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need yeah. to be perfect to get laid. You don't need to be perfect to make money. Um, <laughs> it's like, and you people don't even, here's the thing. Money. You don't even know how to be perfect. You're a fucking newbie. Like, like if you've just started something or you're new at something, how the fuck do you know what perfect even is? You don't. You don't know what perfect is. You're fucking dumb at the start. You are a fucking retard at anything you start. And so how do you even know what perfect is? How do you even know which books to read? How do you even know what is good information and what is someone just spouting shit or lying to you? You don't know. You don't know till you get to the very end. And then you're like, man, half of what I learned was wrong. The other half was like, yeah, I had to tweak it. So it fit me. Like most okay. information doesn't just perfectly slot into your brain. And you use that. You need to tweak it. You're your own human being. You have your own likes, dislikes. That's why I say all the time. Don't just copy what I, what I say or what I do. You need to tweak it for yourself. Like this is all just an experiment, a big experiment. You got to get in there, try some shit, see what works, see what doesn't. So there's, you don't even know what perfect is till you get to the end. Like you would literally have to be a time traveler to get to the point where you're successful to say like, oh, now I know how to be successful. And it was nothing like what other people had told me because I'm my own fucking person. I used a bit from here, some advice from here. Someone else said this, so I tweaked that. I also tried this and figured out this works better than anyone else had ever told me. You put it all together. That's your perfect fucking plan. You don't know that till the end. And more to the point, you get to the end and you see all the shit you're fucking up and you're like, I'm successful though. Like everybody yeah. who's successful is a fucking train wreck. Like nobody <laughs> has their shit together, right? Like literally, no. You think Dude, Elon Musk has his gonna... shit together or Jeff Bezos? Like fuck no. They don't know what they're doing no. half the time. It doesn't Elon matter. Musk has a kid whose name is a fucking serial number. Like, what, and he got like, divorced by the same but... woman multiple fucking times, and he was in a relationship with a woman who's a psycho. And he <laughs> remember when he did the fucking Tesla Cybertruck unveiling, and he smashed the fucking window. If nobody remembers that, like literally, here's my fucking truck. Look how bulletproof it is. Throws a rock at it, and it breaks. And then he's like, "All right, well, second time's the chump." Throws another rock at the other window. That window breaks, and he's like, "We still got like some work to do." Like that. What a fucking train wreck of a human being, right? Like, but it doesn't fucking matter. Not that Elon Musk is yeah, like man. the most perfect person ever, but that's someone who's the richest person in the world. He's telling me he can't get his fucking truck not to have a fucking dent in it when he throws a, a rock at it. Like that guy doesn't, he's not fucking perfect. We're not perfect. I fucked up so many things. I know you did too. And you still get late. You still learn how to open up and be honest with women. You still make money. I fuck up half my coaching calls or, or like, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say I fuck him up. The per now the person doesn't know that. But I'd be like, man, what a shit call today. I was tired. Like, I didn't have anything to give. Like, I could, afterwards, I'll run through and say, like, I should have said this instead. Oh, I forgot to tell the person this. I didn't say this. But who gives a shit? Like, it doesn't fucking matter. You'll go up to women and say the dumbest fucking shit and feel like an idiot. And you'll be like, man, I'm so nervous. This sucks. And then she'll mm -hmm. be like, sure, I'd love to grab a coffee with you. Because no here's the thing. Nobody else on the planet is fucking perfect. 
And so when we put the perfectionist mindset on ourselves, we're basically saying, I have to be perfect in order to get what I want. It's like, no, because everybody else out there is fucking up as well. And so if you're fucking up, they'll be like, oh, well, you're human like us, but you're trying, you're at least trying, taking action, doing the things you need to be doing. And that is, it will get you a reward in itself. You don't have to be perfect while you do it because nobody else is perfect either. Like at all. No, I, you know, as I, and this ties back to like the whole thing, being, uh, being honest with yourself, even more importantly than just goes like being honest with yourself. Like when you could be honest with yourself you and you know what it is you actually really want, the perfectionism will start to die away. Right. Yeah. Cause again, started asking help for you after I started doing this, um, you know, I took a second and sat down like, what do I really want from my biz? Because now that I'm no longer with the company, I'm in the independent solo dollar, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, shit, um, I'm going to go join a group that of people who are way ahead of me in this, right? In, the, in terms of that, like, I already, I know I have the skills, but I don't understand the running of the business part, right? Sure. I don't understand, like, like, there's like, there's two different things of like, having a skill and then running a business. <clears throat> And this will tie back to everything. But uh, once I got in the group, I realized like, oh shit, I have to ask to be helped now. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I have to say I what I this fucking mean. Though. Yeah, I have to go and I'm like, so I go ahead and I post my story and then I write to people, hey, you know, I have this, you know, email I'm going to send out to people I want to work with. Can you guys give me feedback? I'd like to know, like, what do you guys think about it? And everybody was like, oh, you should add this thing, change the subject line. That's a little too, like, boring. This and this. Mm-hmm. Change it to this and change this. And it gave me two suggestions. I'm like, holy shit. Those are two things that are phenomenal. The sp- second one was freaking balls of the wall. Amazing, right? The huge thing there is people absolutely love to help people. Yes. And I think this is important, though. If you've already shown initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're asking for help, but then you do that kind of like laundry list of, I need 50 million things, otherwise I won't get started. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're not mentally, you, you're not there yet. You have to get yeah. to that point where you're like, no, I'm going to go get what I want. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to go get there. Like this, this is yeah. something I really want. It's important to me. So I'm going to go and get it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, people, absolutely love to help you if you're a racial mm-hmm. initiative like i had when people responded right away like this and then they were like came in uh next week we'll be like discussing like the whole business of freelancing and we'll like we'll talk about this and this and this and this and there are things that i'd even consider but because like i already took the first action to be like i'm doing this i drafted up the email i have my clients list that people i'm going to send that to i just want the last minute check and they're like oh people jumped immediately mm-hmm. um Groups are huge, man. I 100% believe groups are huge, but you have to be, you have to be honest with yourself about like what it again, like what it is you want. You have to be, and you have to be willing to risk being honest too, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's that's the scary shit. Like I walked off yeah. for two and a half months. Yeah, when you when you post, even on like a forum or whether it's like a group like you're talking about, like a coaching group or just a, a group of people, there is vulnerability in saying, I want this, or here's my idea, I'm thinking of this, or hey, I'm about to start going outside and talking to women, or I'm about to start a coaching business, coaching people on, I don't know, how to switch to the keto diet, whatever it is. When you first say that to the group, there is vulnerability there, because you're, you're thinking, what if I make this post and they all tell me this is a stupid fucking idea, or I'm dumb, or I'm uh, uh, an idiot, or like whatever it is. There is oh, like a you're not perfect. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. There is that like terror. There's that terror when you first do it. And now every, I will say, let's say 95% of groups that you might join or forums, as long as you're not going on like Reddit, like certain subreddits are just absolute trash. Certain ones are good, but lots are bad. As long as you're going somewhere where people are like semi-decent, 99% of the stuff you post, people will respond well to. They'll go like, yeah, brother, like let's get, let's make this happen. Or if they do say that's a bad idea, they will hopefully on the good ones, and most people do this, they will say, I don't think that's a good idea, but here's what I do instead. And you're like, okay, cool. It's it's very rare that someone will, when you are vulnerable and you share, very rare that someone will be like, that's fucking stupid. 
maybe if you go on the YouTube mm. comments or Reddit, like there are a couple of cesspools on the internet, of course, but for the most part, most people will respond well. The same with women. When you start being honest with women, most women will be like, that's cool. And if anyone doesn't respond well, like you yeah, just screen you... them out. So Yeah, once you cross over to this side, like you start realizing that other behavior is really like, what the fuck are you doing? Buddy? As in the side of honesty. Because you, I'm pretty sure. Honest. Yeah. Yeah, you start being honest, but also like you know when you see those kind of like YouTube comments where they're like, da, 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 you're like, whoa, dude, I don't know what's going on there, but it ain't pretty. Like mentally, you're not in a good place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tie back honestly with chicks. I remember when I dated that, uh, I dated like a super feminist chick just because I knew it was gonna be a train wreck, and I wanted the story. <laughs> but uh, I um, I remember she said something. To, she said something to me once. And uh, I told her, hey, look, listen, this is where I'm so convinced by the power of honesty. I told her, like, look, listen, you can, can't talk to me in this manner. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm not going to be here and we're not going to hang out. And then I walked away. I'm like, I'll see you tomorrow. And I walked away. And then the next time we talked, she's like, I shouldn't respect you right now, but I absolutely do respect you. <laughs> I was just like... I, I laugh because it's like, again, that was something I put myself in that situation with that girl. But it just really goes to show you, like, you got to be honest with what you want. You got to be honest with what you like, what you don't. You know, yeah. you don't have to be, you don't have to be a copy of Andy. You don't have to be a copy of me. You're like, you know, everybody has their own way to get there. But, mm-hmm. and I really do, I really do encourage every guy to really consider, you know, what it is you want with a woman, what it is you want from yourself. Like, yeah. really figure out what you like what you don't like really figure that out because it's just it'll make everything so much easier like it and won't I, have to be this whole thing. Uh, it won't I'm have to be the whole there. fake it till you make it thing yeah hmm? i was gonna jump in and say yeah. i'd add in there really quickly that you also want to figure out like or, or think about what kind of person you want to be as well right because you may not be that person yet, right? yeah right yeah do you want to bring it back full circle? This will be the last thing we talk about. Let's talk about Yoga Girl. And, you know, we talked about her a little bit before, being honest and stuff like that. You guys, I'll, I'll quickly give the, the bit of the backstory that we're going to talk about. You guys, at the end, basically the short version is you decided you both wanted to go separate, like, life missions. You wanted to go live somewhere. She wanted to go live somewhere else. And you had a moment where things were really good between you and you thought – we could just kind of like compromise. Like what if you come with me or what if I compromise my dream and you and I go with you? Like what if one of us compromises and, and we do that? And you guys thought about it, you talked about it and you both came to a point where you were like, I don't think we want to give up our missions. Like as much as we like each other, as much as we, you can talk about this. I don't know if you guys loved each other. As much as you were at that point, like it wasn't enough. Like love isn't enough love is fucking great but you guys decided that you wanted to both go on your separate missions do you want to just talk about that a little bit like your thought process going into it whether you're glad that you guys made yeah that so yeah so i definitely would say like we loved each other um 100 sure about that only because we both ended up saying it to one another but uh yeah so she decided to go live and she bought she had put herself on a wait list for like uh, an apartment in New York and man for like seven years. She finally gets okay, that's a long mission. Yeah. That's yeah, like a so, long. Yeah. So it was a big deal. It was, I obviously I'm like, it's a big deal, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, I don't want to live in Manhattan, especially with all the stuff going on. I'm just like, no, um, I went there, check it out. And I saw like, I just, people are just so fucking crazy. Like I've had people yelling at me if not wearing a mask in the street. It was just like, yeah, I don't think I New York is a happy city at this point in time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. So I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm not compromising on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, she wanted me to just live with me. And I'm like, I, I couldn't personally do it. I couldn't see myself doing it. And, uh, and then I was like, I, I told her, I'm like, look, I told her, I told her like, this. I know if I tell you to stay down here with me, I am 90% sure you do. Mm. I'm 90% sure you should do it. And I told her that too. Like, I'm 90% sure. And am I wrong? And she goes like, it's like, no, like, you know, I'd, I'd love to. And I'm like, right. But you've been on this appointment. Wait, that's how important is it to you? She goes like, I've, I've always wanted. 
I'm like, all right, I'm gonna look this up. Um, go ahead and try it out. See what, see how you like it. But um, you know, hit me up in a month and let me know how you're feeling. But uh, I'm not gonna do it. And you know, we spoke about it, and it's 100 true. Like I didn't think about it, but it was. I didn't consciously think about it, but when you said it, it made a lot of sense. Is that she would hold it against me. She would always like hold she it. She would like, resent you, you yeah, know. if she gave up her yeah, She would always hold it like, I I, I stay down yeah. here, now you gotta go do this. It'll come up when you guys have like an argument or something, or when you- Yeah, it'll come up in fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave up this for you, and I'm like, oh boy. So, you know, <clears throat> so, it sucked. I'm not gonna like lie and be like it didn't, you know? 100% sucked, because it was good. It was a good relationship, you know, showed me everything I definitely, definitely want. I'm like, holy shit, sweet, cook, um, you know, gave me massages on the regular. Sex was like great, et cetera, et cetera, on and on, right? Like legit, it was just nine out of 10, right? In terms of like what it was like to be in a relationship. And it was one of the things that, you know, didn't end because it went bad or sour just ended because things are like that right now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Again, I think it also ties to like, you know, can that change? Like, if you had, if I had compromised on that, maybe it would have not been like a, a thing with her, but a thing with me. Like, I wouldn't have respected myself for it, you know? Yeah. And and if you can't sit with yourself on something. You do all the worst shit afterwards, right? <laughs> like if you can't respect yourself on certain things, it, it comes up in one way or another. It always does. You can't hide yeah. from that. Yeah. And, and let's be clear, just, like you can't have relationships do have compromises. Like you do need to compromise in relationships, but there are certain compromises and, and you had you you were both pretty rational. I was qu- pretty impressed. I told you this. I was pretty impressed by how rational both of you were when you made this decision. I know it wasn't easy. You will make small compromises, but when it comes to the big ones like this, you know, we talked about it a fair bit. People make these big compromises in relationships. They'll do something they don't want to do. Like one of them will have kids when the when they don't really want to, or they'll get married when they didn't really want to. They'll move somewhere they don't really want to. They will, you know, not have kids when they really wanted it. They'll compromise on the really big important shit. And moving, by the way, when you've wanted to move somewhere for like seven years, that's a big important thing. Or yeah, you, pretty big. If you, yeah. And if you'd made the compromise and moved somewhere you fucking hated, by the way, remember that I left my old city, Melbourne, which from what I've been told of people that have been to both cities, Melbourne and New York are basically the same, but New York has double the population. So it's like everything I didn't like about Melbourne, New York is twice as bad as that. Like Four population density. Yeah. yeah. And I left Melbourne when like in 2020, in like mid 2020, because of all the mass shit and everyone was being insane. And like people like literally screaming at you on the street, police coming up to you and interrogating you. Why aren't you following? Why are you even outside? Like, what are you doing? And like, I understand that energy. I understand that yeah. that would be an unreasonable compromise. Like, that's not a compromise. That's just like, I hate myself if I do this. And so people will do this in a relationship. They'll do something that they think they're okay with at the start and they put up with it. And it's fine when it's good. Like when you're having good days together and you're like, I love you. You love me. I'm so glad I did this. And she'll say like, thank you for making this sacrifice. Or if she had sacrificed, you would say to her, thank you so much for the sacrifice. But then there will be- It's always there. Yeah, it's always there. And it comes out, like I said, it doesn't even necessarily come out when you have a fight. It's, I guess I'll throw in a side note. I don't believe that relationships should have fights. I don't believe fights are necessary or mandatory in a fight. I'll do a podcast on that at some point. Anyway. I understand that a lot of people do fight though. It will come out in a fight or it will even come out. Let's say you're having a day where you have shit to do. Let's say she moved to where you're living and, or she stayed there. You have shit to do. You're busy with work one day and she goes, honey, I want to hang out with you. And you're like, yeah, I understand, babe, but I got all this work to do. Why don't we hang out tonight or we hang out tomorrow? And she's going to sit there and be like, but I need this. I'm yeah. And I yeah. moved here for him. And now he's ignoring my fucking needs. If I was in New York, I would be hanging with my friends. I'd be doing cool shit. I wouldn't be needy. I stayed here for you. And now you're mm-hmm. not available for me. Or the reverse. If you're in New York, you have a day where you go outside and a bunch of fucking people yell at you. And where's your fucking mask? You're killing my grandma. What are you fucking doing? Fuck you. 
Yeah. I'm, you know, fuck yeah. it's New York. Fuck you. I'm going to say fuck you just because it's New York. Fuck you. And you're going to be like, man, I fucking hate this city. You're going to go back home to her and be like, babe, I need a fucking hug. Hey. And she's just like, oh, well, sweet. I'm sorry. Uh, here's a hug, babe. And I'm sorry. I'm going out with my friends. Like, uh, I'll see you when you get back. She leaves and you're just sitting here going, why the fuck am I in this shit city? So you won't even be mad at her. Like you said, you'll be mad at yourself. And if yep. she moves, she might be mad at herself too. Why did I make such a stupid decision? All of my friends told me not to give up on my dream. Your friends will tell you the same thing. I told you the same thing. I said it to you gently, but you know, all of your friends will say, don't make a compromise. You're going to resent her. Why are you being pussy whipped? And all of her friends will say, why are you giving up what you want for some guy? Like, yeah, I understand you love him. I understand you guys have something beautiful, but like love is not enough. Too many people make the mistake of thinking love is like everything. Love is all we need. It's all that Disney Hollywood bullshit. And it's like, yeah. love is fucking wonderful. Love feels fucking nice. Love is a beautiful thing. I'm all for love, of course, but it doesn't conquer everything. Like you have to have your mission that you're working on and she has to have hers. And more to the point, you already know like this, you just said this before, you have to be able to respect yourself. She has to re be able to respect herself. And then you have to be able to respect each other. And if one of you makes a compromise that is like too over the line where you know you're not going to be happy, you know that you're just doing it because you're coming from a place of fear of like, what if I miss out on this person? What if I can't have this going forward? You're, you're doing it out of, negative emotions rather than like because you want to give something to someone that's that that you can't respect each other that's gonna come up later on or it will slowly it's like a virus that will slowly like build its way up till you have one of those days where you say why the fuck did i compromise the fuck was this like you have to be okay with the compromise yes compromises will happen you have to be okay with the compromises they can't be like a big one that's yeah. going to ruin it's, you you got to be able to live with yourself at the end of the day yeah dude yeah. Like you're going to sleep at the end of the day, you wake up with yourself at the end of the day, like I guess at that point where it's something you can't live with yourself with, like uh... Yeah. And I mean fine, like it's not the worst thing in the world. You would just like break up and be like, Oh fuck, we should have done this a year or two ago. Like it's I'm not gonna say it's like life ruining or something, but you can see how the bigger compromises that and and, and there would be plenty of people that would move and not figure that out. So that's where that is a problem. But you can see how like if you had kids and you never wanted kids. Like, my God, what a nightmare. Imagine you look at your child for the next 20 years and you resent them. Or you, well, you wouldn't resent them, but you resent the fact that you chose to have them. Fuck me. That's some dark shit. Or you look that's at your partner and you're like, I don't like you. Like, I don't know why I stayed. That was dumb. It, it just comes, it'll come out one way or another. It always does. Passive aggressive yeah. shit. It just, it just, it comes Or a midlife out. crisis or yeah. self-medication or drugs or cheating or mm -hmm. leaving the- Or just straight up one day you just- it just like you've had enough yeah. and you snap and you yeah. start lashing out. Yeah. And it just, it always, it comes out, man. Always, always yeah. And that's why such an important part, you know, we're, we're bringing it all full circle. What you talked about at the start with having needs and knowing what you, your needs are, knowing what you want, knowing what your boundaries are, knowing what you're okay with. Like, and yes, to some extent you figured that out as you go along. Of course, of course, of course, but you can, like you said, you can skip a lot of that process and sit there and kind of think about what you like, at least at the start, what you might like, what you might need, what your boundaries might be, what you might not be okay with. You don't have to go plowing like you and I did, plowing through like Hell. however many women making however many mistakes before you finally say what you need. Hell, even at the beginning, right? Like you can just be like, um, when you go on a date with someone and you don't necessarily know, you can honestly just say that. Like, I'm just trying to figure out what I like and what I don't like. Yeah. That could be a thing. Yeah. and keep <laughs> an open mind yeah 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 that could be a thing just saying like oh like when you're inexperienced you know you got all these like you're just trying to get to the date you're like oh my god we gotta get to the date and then you're on the date like oh my god what do i do now right <laughs> i remember i remember i forgot who it was in jail but somebody was like i'm on a date and like when do i touch her <laughs> or some well, shit. as in like he's he's writing this on the date like he's messaging on the date no, no, no. He's like, he said, he posted it after. It was a whole thing. Yeah, I was going to say. I, and I laugh because I too. had my own moments like that. It's like, I want to touch her, but like, how do I touch? It's like, no, like you want to touch her. So like. Put your hand, extend no. um, 45 degrees <laughs> out. Clamp, yeah, gently, and like, clamp fingers, like one of those you know, claw machines. Put your hand on her fucking yeah. hand clamp. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> she's sitting too far, right? And you don't want her to sit like there. Like, hey, come sit next to me. I want you to sit next to me. 
and it's like it's because yeah. at the start it's like you said it's like this perfectionist mindset where you want to get everything perfect and you want to like like you said like she's sitting too far away from me i wanted to sit closer how do i do that and it's like you don't have to be perfect do it yeah. if i had a gun to your head do whatever you would do <laughs> if i had a gun to your head and told you she has to sit next to you you'd be like ah ah hey come here please 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 come here that's my favorite fucking thing to say to people when they're like, how do I hit on that chick? What do I say? How do I ask for her phone number? I'm like, I have a gun to your head. Do whatever the fuck you would do if I was going to shoot you if you didn't like execute on the plan. And so then they just fuck it up. And like when I say fuck it up, they give themselves permission to fuck it up. And they go, I don't care. Uh, hey, uh, you, you're really cute. Uh, uh, fuck. Can I have your phone number? And then sometimes she says yes, because you weren't trying to be perfect. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's like, and how do don't I also hold her hand? How do I do this? How do I... Don't also do the too cool for school shit, right? Don't try to be like, oh, like I don't, you know, I don't, know, I don't really want the bitch in it, because like we've all done it, right? But it, yeah, I, I'm right. abundant. I don't need a bitch. I don't need to. I, I don't need to be honest. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I fuck her. I'm not even gonna try. Yeah, like, I'm like shut up. Like you, you wanted that ass. Like come on, yeah. but hey, it didn't happen. It happens. All right. I mean, that's that's tying back to what you said. You know, this whole conversation has been about knowing what your needs are and asking for them. If you play it too cool and you're like, I don't even care, like that's you not admitting that you want this. I've seen that as well, where guys. That's just the way to protect them. yourself. Is all it is. It is, of course, of course. It's the way to protect. Because yeah. if you, oh. I, I'm a big fucking nerd, and one of the games that I love to follow is Counter Strike CS:GO, and I love following the esports tournament, the esports side of things. Anyway, one of the scenes, one of the the countries that fucking sucks at this game is the UK. Like, the United Kingdom fucking sucks at this game. They have for a long time. And the biggest reason why, and they will even admit this themselves, is because what they will do is they will get decent, they will practice, they will train, they will get to a tournament. They don't even get to tournaments anymore. But th when they were getting to tournaments, they would get to the tournament, and at the very start, they would just not fucking try. They'd fuck around, and they'd lose. And then when they'd get interviewed, the interviewer would say, like, how come, like, trying. You literally they would say we don't even care like this is just a dumb video game you guys are all nerds like they would literally shit on the other people and be like we're all just fucking bros we're just here to have a good time like you guys are all taking this video game this is a fucking like you guys don't get laid you're all incels and it's like you fucking retard this tournament the prize money is one million dollars don't fucking tell me this is just a video game you are literally a shit cunt who doesn't want a million dollars you're literally too scared to go for a million dollars because you might fail and only win a hundred thousand dollars like don't tell me that this is just a fucking game we're way past that point like you obviously care or you wouldn't be practicing in a fucking team you would just be playing the game with your mates casually on a friday night and so i've seen that too where people will say i don't even care this is just i don't even care I don't even want to get laid. Like, what do I care? I'm working on my business. I don't even care. And it's like, then you're going to get shit results. One of the first things you have to do is actually fucking try. You have to actually <clears> say <throat> you want this. If I go, if I go start a business or whatever, and I'm like, I don't even care about money. I'm going to make like $5. I'll probably lose money. It, it, it is two different people, man. It's two. It, it's like, it's two different things. When you actually admit the things that you want, mm. the actions behind them are so much more focused yeah. directed and it's mm. like it, there's 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 no comparison mm. there's no fucking comparison like, that's why I, I debated whether calling it the only, like number one shortcut but every, like shortcut is just such a cheesy word to me but it's true though like when you're serious about what it is that you want mm. like you cut off all the bullshit yeah you cut away all the bullshit it does this thing serve to get the thing you want or not like Mm -hmm. is playing games going to serve what you want if if that's what you want then it's exactly what you're going to do right yeah you need a when you go when you go to study you need to set you need to set a course otherwise you will drift yeah and you'll self-sabotage as well if you don't define where you want to go or what it is that you need or what it is that you want like what your goal is basically is what we're saying here if you don't define that you will self-sabotage like if you just like business if you say oh i'm going to start a business but like you don't have an actual goal like you don't say i want to make x amount of money or i want to have this many clients or i want to get this many positive testimonials or i want to change this many lives or i want to get my youtube to this size like if you don't have an actual tangible goal you're going to self-sabotage like someone will give you an opportunity and they'll say uh hey i want to work with you 
I want to be your client. Here's two thousand um, dollars. I need you to build me a website. And you'll go like, oh, I don't really feel like building a website. I'm busy this week. Like, I don't know. I was gonna go hang out with the boys. Like, and you'll reply and be like, Yeah, I can do it, but I'll I'll do it in three weeks. And they're like, Well, no, I need it now. Can you do it now? What if I pay you two thousand six hundred dollars? I'll give you an extra six hundred dollars. Would you do it this week? And you're like no, nah, I want to hang out with the boys. I'll do it next week. And they're just like, well, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else. Like you fuck stuff up or a girl. If you don't fully define, like, I want this kind of woman, you know, we said it before. I want an honest woman who's attractive. I want this. I want her to be into this. I, I, I want to get laid on the second date. Or like, if you don't have a game plan, what will happen is you'll meet a bunch of chicks that aren't that. Like maybe you'll meet an angry fucking feminist or you'll meet a chick that's just not attractive and you'll just go like, yeah, whatever. I'll just go with this. And you end up in a position where you, you don't like the girls that you're sleeping with. Women do this too. Women do this too, where they will not define the kind of man they want and they'll end up with a bunch of like fuck boys in their words and they'll just be like, how come I can't find the man I want? And it's like, because you haven't defined what man you want. You're going and having casual sex with guys who literally tell you, I'm just going to fuck you. And you're just going along with that because you haven't said, no, I want a relationship. I need a relationship. I want something more. I want a guy that's going to see me for a long time. You haven't defined it. And so you're just going to end up with like bullshit. Like shit, like you said, just bullshit that you don't want. Yeah, man. I just, yeah, I just can't, I can't stress that enough. Really, like the more, the quicker you get to be honest with yourself, admitting what it is you really want, admitting you have needs, hmm. the, the faster you'll get that very thing it is that you want. Yeah. Even more so, even more importantly, like once you figure out what it is you want, the next thing to ask is how, you know? Yeah. Like how, what are you going to do? Yeah. So like, if you want to get, like, let's say you say, I want to see with 30 girls this year. I want to do it through online dating. Okay, cool. Now you're like, now you know exactly. All right. So I got to start doing this, this and that. Like mm -hmm. it, it becomes a lot easier, right? To be like, oh, well, that means I need to yeah. go get photos. That means I need to set up a cool bio. That means I need to start, you know, like swiping and pay for the Tinder boost or whatever the fuck, you know, um, if, or if you're more like, well, I want to meet chicks in the street. Okay, cool. Well, you got to move to where you can't do that. Right. Because if you live move in a town of 30,000 people yeah. and the houses are super far from one another, guess what? You're not meeting a chick in the fucking street. This is not happening. You're going to have to move to like a really big city or whatever the fuck. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Define your goals before you go for them. Let's start wrapping up. This has been a hell of a lot of fun, man. Is there anything you want to shout out? Any final words? Anyone you want to shout out? Shout out. Any of your shit you shout want to shout to out? Shout, shout out to Chris. Chris. Good looking loser. loser. The original, the OG. He was uh, OG. Uh, yeah. I don't think we'd, any of us would be here if it weren't for that dude. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Like, even just creating the space for all of us to communicate is just mm. insane yeah like having a space to communicate with like a bunch of guys you would never meet otherwise mm -hmm. i've never i would never know who the fuck you were if it were <laughs> like you're all yeah. the way to the other side of the world you're yeah, a day ahead forums, of me. his forums are as important as anything he ever wrote like yeah. honestly dude yeah yeah no shout outs to him i'm super grateful to that guy oh my god shout out to chris um Shout out to, uh, shout out to fucking good beaches. Cause I mean, personally, the beaches where I've done well. Uh, I'm and, two minutes from a beach right here. Beautiful fucking beach, like two minutes that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Logistically, you're excited, man. Hmm. Uh, the last shout out I'd say is, um, <clears throat> Chris's article about doing what you want is fantastic. I think it's required reading. But uh, I think even a better way to say that doing what you want is to be honest with yourself, even in the face of fear. Yeah, I think I think because doing what you want could easily lead to like the whole I'm too cool for school interpretation. Like, oh, well, I'm doing what I want. But fuck you. Like, that, like, nah, like be honest with yourself, even if it's scary as shit. Yeah. You like know? what you actually want deep down. Yeah. Like, deep Not down, like, like the what surface it is. level shit. Like, what do you really want? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you and I say, what do we want right now? I'll tell you what I want right now. I want to go and eat uh, a six-pack of, like, Krispy Kreme donuts. I want to go and eat five hamburgers. 
I want to lay on the couch and just watch YouTube for the next six hours and do nothing. I want to email my coaching client that I have a couple of hours from now and just say like, dude, I'm not coming. I'm just going to watch YouTube all day and do nothing. I want to go drink whiskey. Like that's what I want, but I don't really want those yeah. things. If I say what I actually want, it's like, no, I want to do my coaching client today. I want to go and meditate. I want to record some podcasts. Like you talk about the deeper level shit. And, and for a lot of guys, they will say, okay, if I'm honest, I want to go and talk to women. I'm just fucking scared. So I like that you said like, sometimes it's a scary thing, but you still have to admit yeah. you want that thing. And you, and you know, and you know, you figure it is what you want when you can articulate it in like one to two sentences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you have to say it in like, if it takes like 30 minutes for you to like say what it is you want, you don't know what you want. Or if you, you say it to someone else and they say, I still don't know what you want. Like I've had yeah, many yeah. guys that say, you know, they'll hit me up for a coaching. They'll hit me up for coaching and they'll say, uh, I want to improve my results with women. And I'm like, what is that? I, I don't know what you want. That's too vague. Yeah. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't mean it's too it. vague. I, I want to the worst answer I ever got was like, I want to become a fully actualized person. And I was like, what are you like a robot right. or something? Like, like that doesn't well, mean- You gotta hit up Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, like... <laughs> <laughs> I can give you some books. I can teach you to meditate. I mean, I'm on that spiritual hippie shit right now, but like, God damn, like you gotta give me a fucking like actual thing to work with. Like I want to yeah. meditate for 20 minutes a day or I want to fucking have an epiphany. I don't know, but yeah. Define your goals for sure. All right, homie. I appreciate you coming on. This was a lot of fun. We went in some different yeah. tangents than I thought we would, but it was pretty fucking good. <laughs> Dude, what does your shirt say? I've been trying to read it. Like. What does my shirt say? You can't read How dare you? I actually don't know what it says. I genuinely don't know what this shirt says. I will stand up. Ride. All I've, all I've been able to read is ride. Um, I see passion now. and love, love, love. Mission. Passion. I don't fucking oh, okay. know. It's just a t shirt that I bought from fucking Zara. Leave me alone. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> end, the fucking, end the podcast. Go out there, crush your goals, and wear a cool shirt like this. <laughs>